the sorrows of Mary, seven locutions to the world from November 20 to 26, 2014. The first locution from Mary on November 20, Satan's smoke in the Vatican. My sorrows. These are what I must begin to share again. Sorrows lie at the center of my soul. I am the mother of sorrows, a role that I accepted from the beginning and which Simeon prophesied in the temple. The temple became my place of sorrows. I was wounded by Jesus' words when I found him in the temple. My greatest sorrows are reserved for my church, the bride of my son. The fires of Satan have burned brightly within the church, even in its highest offices. This smoke arises today from those who hold back the fullness of my graces. I must teach the world. The Catholic Church is the bride of Jesus. It is his mystical body and enjoys the fullness of his truths and his powers. Nothing is lacking in its gifts, as it faithfully proclaims the gospel and joyfully celebrates the mysteries. I have kept it faithful for two thousand years, beginning with my work among the apostles and disciples. From the beloved disciple at Ephesus there were messages to the churches and the heavenly liturgies were revealed to all. The Catholic Church is deepest within me. It lies at the center of my heart and I cherish deeply the role and the power given to the Holy Father. These are the very gifts that I want to use as a light to the whole world. I will accomplish this as the events of darkness begin. However, I must speak so the whole world and especially the Holy Father understands. Satan's smoke has reached the highest levels of the Vatican. His deceptions fill the Vatican and so many whom he has planted there. Would this not be his plan, to enter the very stronghold of the church? This is my greatest sorrow. To overcome this, I must make alternate plans so my church is exalted. The second locution from Mary on November 21, seeking total surrender. Time is slipping away. The light is dimming and the darkness is growing. All of this I see so clearly and try to warn the world. Every day, there are new sorrows and no answers are found. Mankind is surrounded by evil. Satan wants a moment when the world will surrender to him and make him king. Earth will become his new kingdom. Cast out from heaven, he will at last claim what heaven so desires, and earth taken up into God's glory. God prizes earth and covets mankind which he created for his glory. Satan will so rejoice, seeking to replace Jesus as the king of earth. Many have already surrendered. They have given themselves, heart and soul, to Satan. He has already tasted of their blood and filled them with his evils. He multiplies their numbers, equips them with powers, enlightens them with his own intelligence and sends them out to conquer the whole world for his kingdom. He is not satisfied with all the victories, big and small, which have claimed so many. He will be satisfied only with total surrender, where no vestige of light or hope remains. Is this not the deepest sorrow of my heart? Not just to see what has already happened but also to see all that Satan plans and hopes to accomplish. So many events lie ahead. So many traps of darkness. So many places where literally the earth will open up to swallow its victims. Every day, the number that I can save grows less and less. Once Satan grasps a soul, he quickly brings it deeper into his darkness so the soul does not know how to respond to my light. So, I visit the earth. I go to the homes and places where my name is invoked. I especially use these locutions. I always whisper words of encouragement, stay strong, abide in the light. Let no darkness enter your heart or your home. Do not fear what is happening. To those who invoke me, I will give the strength never to surrender and even to help others not to surrender. The third locution from Mary on November 22, the sacred moment of worldly emptiness. I see all that will come about. These events are still hidden from human eyes but soon all will be seen clearly. Human life will be changed. Many will lose hope. 
severe changes will result, one after another. Hearts will be dismayed. Many will despair. Life will not be the same. How I hate to speak those words, how much better to promise a bright and glorious future. However, that is not the road which man has chosen. He is free. He makes his daily decisions. He decides the road and the direction. Soon, he will come to the end of the road, with seemingly nowhere to go. Many options will have been ripped from his hands. The greatness of his systems will be gone. Even what he considered his lifelines will be jeopardized and, in some instances, will no longer function. Enough will remain for people to survive, but at a much lower level than now. Such will be the reduced state of the human race. The effects will be felt everywhere and all will admit that human life has been severely changed. That will be the moment of my coming, when the very powers of the world are muted. When the voice of the world is silenced. When men no longer listen to the sweet tunes of profitable music. When so much has been taken away from human hearts. What a sacred moment. A door is ajar. Hearts are empty. This is when I can come and say, come here. Walk this way. I will save you. Blessed are those who have prepared for those times. They will see the new road. The fourth locution from Mary on November 23, gathering with others. All is not hopeless but the road of hope will be seen only by a divine light given to groups dedicated to me. This I want to explain very deeply. When a person receives my light, they see the need for others. They cannot walk alone. There must be others. Where are the people who believe in my messages and gather to fulfill my requests? Everywhere I have appeared, I have urged people to gather and to help one another. But the groups come and go. Many start with a burst of enthusiasm and then allow their zeal to cool. In the year ahead, you will need a great light of hope which you can only receive if you are bonded to others in communal prayer, where all search for the road of light. If you are faithful to this regular gathering, even if it is just within your home, I will assure you of the light needed for hope. How often I have spoken of the coming darkness. A certitude grows within you that it will certainly take place. I want you also to be certain of my light in the darkness which I can only give you if you gather as often as possible with others. Gathering with others is the secret that I want to reveal. Personal prayer is important but my special gifts are given when people gather, when they commit themselves to join their hearts. If, when the darkness comes, you remain with others, I will constantly pour out my light and you will find the road of hope. The Fifth Locution from Mary on November 24, The Three Stages I am taking the church into my own hands, just as a mother lifts into her arms a child who is endangered. I will do this in many ways. First, new devotions must spread quickly so people become more attentive. A fresh awareness must come over the church, a widespread sense that all must return to my Immaculate Heart. This will prepare for the next stage when the great difficulties begin, which I call the events. People will begin to search. For many with faith, this will be a religious search and the new awareness will lead them to search for me. Finally, there is the third stage, when by the Holy Father's consecration of Russia, I will come completely onto the world stage, offering to mankind the full gifts of my Immaculate Heart. Then, the war will break out. Until now, there have been only surrenders. There has been no army of Mary because I have been kept out of the limelight. All of that will end. I will come onto the scene. All will see my actions in every part of the world. Great new devotions will spring up and be embraced by millions. It will be like a massive tsunami, but one that brings life not death. My advice for now is, prepare. Take up once again the familiar devotions. I will impart to everyone a very simple trust in me and a new sense of my presence watching over each one. Let us begin to walk this road of hope. 
The sixth locution from Mary on November 25, Mary's promises to beginners. When the events begin, it will be too late. Many will find themselves unable to respond because they are bereft of any faith in supernatural help. They will not know the ways of God or how it can save them. They know only natural powers and human resources which will totally fail them in these events. So, I must explain my help. I am present to every person in the world. To each one, I offer my help. I do not limit my presence or my saving power. Some are keenly aware of this. They always experience my help and turn to me in every need. They also live according to the gospel teachings and are faithful to the church. They understand my promises because they are already experiencing my presence. Now I speak to others. Through these locutions they are beginning to grasp the need for my help. They also see my promise and my new gifts that will be needed to face the future events which will severely change the whole world. To these I say, you have beginning faith. Your hearts are filled with beginning light. You sense something new. Your mind has been plunged into all my promises. You see a new road which you want to walk. This road is true. The invitation is so vital. Follow these new hopes. Commit yourself to my ways. I am awakening you while there is still time. Follow these holy desires. Soon, you, too, will realize that I am always present, always helping and always leading. You have found the door to my Immaculate Heart. Enter quickly and remain there. You will be safe. The Seventh Locution from Mary on November 26, Evil is Not Yet Seen time moves on and events take control. Mankind loses power and looks on helplessly as forces that he has released take their own path. Such is the state of the world. By so many decisions, mankind has released forces that are shaping his destiny and forming his systems. Even those who understand what is happening, have no power to control the events. Yet, the events that I am speaking of are still hidden. They are not the same as those which fill today's headlines. They are forces embedded in the human structures whose time has not yet come. Satan knows well the destructive powers which he long ago planted in human life, through the selfish decisions of those whose hearts he controlled. Now, he waits for the right moment when these destructive powers will best be used. These are the sorrows of my heart which I see so clearly, future evils not yet brought forth. My response is to visit people. I visit those with great powers so they make decisions. I visit those who hold authority in the church, so they might be enlightened. I visit you, O oh reader, and I offer you special graces. Listen to what I am saying within you. Do not put off until tomorrow what you must do today. How important are the inner stirrings of your heart? Listen. Receive. Act. Tell others. Nothing is too little. I will bless every prayer and every effort 